So good morning, Emma. I know, I know you've been super busy this morning, darting all over the place. So uh, tell us a little bit about your lifestyle. What's been going on? Well, it's a bit of a long journey, to be honest. I'm from Newport in South Wales. Um, and I should go with the entrepreneurial journey, right? So I scraped through school with like six GCSEs. I wasn't very good at the traditional like education system. Um, I moved abroad when I was 16 with my family and then I moved back a couple of years later. Um, went through college, didn't really go much. Well, I got to the car park, I didn't really go in. Uh, and I was really stuck for years and years. I got jobs in call centres, uh, you know, Cardiff Gate and Lloyd's TSB and Clapper Park and, and all those things. And I honestly just thought like that would just be my life, really. I thought I all I ever wanted to be was a mum. And so I thought, well, that's that's kind of going to be my lot. You know, I'm always going to struggle for money and I don't really have any like skills. And my sister and I set up a beauty salon which got me out of the call centre world after going to America and seeing they had this kind of culture of you can just walk in and get your nails done, which we didn't have in the UK at that time. And so we set up a, uh, a beauty salon in Kalia, which is still there today. We sold it on, but it's still there. And then um, after that, I joined the police, which is a bit of a change, isn't it? So I became a police officer, worked in the control room in, in Cumbran for a while. And then I applied for Manchester police and I became a police officer. And um, I loved it. I like, I really loved it. Met my husband there. And there was something about when I got, when I became pregnant that I just got terrified and it wasn't until I was 30 weeks pregnant. So I left it really late to become terrified. And it was just in that pregnancy where I thought I'm a police officer. I'm earning 1600 pounds a month take home. I lived in a house that my parents owned and I paid them rent. We didn't have any money in the bank. And I remember just thinking like, oh my God, I'm not going to be able to give my kids the life that I would really love to give them. And I'm going to get stuck, stuck in this, you know, I have to work for £1,600 risk in my life every day to pay childcare fees of probably a grand a month for me and Sean to, he was a police officer as well, to work full time in the police. And it it didn't make sense, but I had nothing else really to fall back on. I mean, if I opened a beauty salon again, which I had experience in, I would still be out of the house and I still wouldn't be able to be the mum that I wanted to be. So it was at that point, really, that um, I remember the exact point, scrubbing skirting boards in my bedroom, 11 o'clock at night, and I had just looked over at the nursery or what would have become William's nursery. And I remember thinking, like, what the hell have I done? Like oh my god I'm a failure you know I can't give this baby an amazing life I'm gonna get stuck in this cycle and I just I just felt like absolute crap about myself I sat on the end of the bed and sobbed and then I thought about a message that I had received from a friend of mine saying um, she helped people earn some extra money from home it was in the network marketing space which I'd never heard of I thought I came across it you know for the first time like myself before I discovered it <laughs> Um, and I got started in, in that space initially. Because I can remember meeting you in Cardiff in an Intrabiz Expo. Yes, I remember. You were creating the most amazing organising systems. For oh. <laughs> so what That's happened there? So that was my second business. So I started in the network marketing industry. I sold health and wellbeing products and built sales teams to do the same. That's what network marketing is. Uh, I built a team of around 100,000 people um, all around the world. My sister and I, my sister passed away, it always gets me. Um, I've just been talking about her, so that's why I'm normally okay. It's been two and a half years now. But um, my sister had a doll business called Bonnie and Pearl, and that was in Cardiff. Um, well, she had it in St. David. Um, and she sold her dolls in Harrods and she actually introduced me to Trace from Intraviz. And then I, I spoke at that event and prior to that, I'd already set up my planners. So I was just frustrated that I was, you know, an entrepreneur running uh, a really busy business, a new mum. And I, yeah, I was, I was like, I need a planner. I tried everyone on the market and I just, I didn't do it to make money. I genuinely did it because I needed a planner. So I just mapped it out on a piece of paper one o'clock in the morning, one morning when I was like sat at my desk frustrated because I couldn't plan my time effectively. 
and just gave it to my husband like can we just get this made and so we did and that went crazy crazy well I don't know how many we sold over the years maybe about 100,000 units um that went really really well I actually then after my sister got ill and it was locked down it had um, like a rare and aggressive cancer um after that happened I just felt that the network marketing business we we built it together she had a massive team in the Middle East we used to travel a lot so all of like the company trips everything just reminded me of her and it was like just putting a magnifying glass on the fact that she wasn't here every time I started to do business again. And I just thought, this is too painful. Like, I need to change direction. Um, so I'd already obviously built a traditional business in the plan of business. We'd already had uh, a clothing business too. Uh, my husband ran that, like, printing, embroidery and design business. And I was like, I, need to, I just feel like I want a fresh start and I want to go in a new direction. And so I started a um, like a group coaching kind of membership uh, group called the Impact Academy. Um, and it was sort of as a result of doing that and working a lot closer with people in different industries and to see how I was able to help them with the network that I had built and the connections that I had and also like the strategy and the knowledge of building businesses globally. I thought, hmm. I really enjoy doing this and I love seeing people's results from it. But I was really frustrated with the coaching world because I haven't been in it and I looked at it and thought, I really don't like this. And so I wanted to create something that, that you know, felt right with me. Uh, and so I launched uh, Entrepreneursity, which is like a university. It's not a university, but you know what I mean, uh, for entrepreneurs. So inside of there, we launched that in uh, September we in 2023 yeah so 2022 um and we launched with like over a thousand members and it's gone from strength to strength so we have lots coming up as well in the in the pipeline there are lots of things that are that we are launching and all really around kind of um making the kind of coaching industry and learning entrepreneurial skills way more accessible to people more affordable for people um and yeah we've got a lot of things coming <laughs> So tell us about the your ideas around everyone should have an Amazon account. So oh, um, yeah. <laughs> and create sales through Amazon. Because I see a lot of women, they have a core business, but they're always looking for side hustles to add on to this business in order then to just generate more money. I truly believe in multiple streams of income, but I think people can get a little bit confused because... They've got lots, of, especially if you do have an entrepreneurial mind, then you can get kind of caught up building this like front layer of business or businesses and never really like fully getting one business going and then moving on to the next. So I really promote building multiple streams of income, but there is really a way of doing that. So I, I believe in like you build the business, you build the marketing machine behind it so that then you are just spinning plates. So once that marketing machine is built, there will be times you have to go back and you have to tweak and adjust, but the money will still come in. And then you move on to the next. For me, Amazon is, an, is a no brainer. So inside of Entrepreneurs Do, we teach people multiple streams of income. Not all by me, I don't teach all of them because I'm not the expert in everything. Anna uh, Davidson is our expert in Amazon inside of Entrepreneurs Do. And the benefit of that is that uh, Anna's course outside of entrepreneurship, which is exactly the same as what's inside, is £3,600 in a group mentor environment. Inside of entrepreneurship, it's included in the monthly subscription, which is 39 for the founders offer and then 47 uh, it's changing soon. So um, they get access to how to build an Amazon business, how to build an Etsy business, how to build a network marketing business, how to build a coaching business, everything's in there. Um, with the Amazon, I don't think people realize like the potential we almost think like oh well it's been around so long like there's no potential for like little old me and it's not the case it was only when I was interviewing previous clients of Anna to check you know I need to get the best experts uh, and ones with really good hearts so I wanted people who were genuinely looking for other people to win so uh, I interviewed a couple of the previous students and it really impressed me there was a young girl who worked in a dog sanctuary um, who had 
gone on to do different things to try and earn more money, but just loved what she was doing, but she just wasn't earning enough money. And um, so she started an Amazon business and she made this um, little uh, dog of a certain breed. I don't know what it is, but it's got like a heartbeat and a heat pad on it so that um, when puppies leave their mum, she sold dogs on Amazon. And I was like, wow. And, and hold on, talk me through it. You know, like how much did you invest? And I think her investment was about 600 pounds initially in her first batch of stock. And I thought, this is a business that anyone can start. And you don't have to have money to start an Amazon business. You can do KDP, which is the publishing. Um, you know, there are different things, but I would recommend a product-based business through Amazon because these people, honestly, they're selling garlic, a garlic press. You know what that is, Cheryl? We've all got one in our house. It's not fancy. It's not great. They're earning like $106,000 a month selling one garlic press. I mean, come on. Even if you don't want to earn 100000 a month, like, do you want to take 10000 of that? <laughs> like, it's crazy to me. So for me, Amazon is like a real great tag on for a lot of different business. Um, I personally coached a lot of personal trainers. I don't know how it's happened. I think one person just told another person that I helped them and their results and then and so for personal trainers or people in the health industry, for example, it's very easy to build like an Amazon shop store and brand where you can sell scales, which you literally can buy in. But the ones that I buy for nine, I bought for 90 pounds, you can buy them and source them for three. I mean, and if you're recommending things to people, which we all do anyway, if you're recommending things to people, to me, this is an absolute no-brainer. You don't have to touch a product. You don't have to deal with customer service. Amazon can do everything for you. So for like personal trainers, there are people that sell foam rollers, foam rollers on Amazon that earn like 80 or 1,000 a month. But none of us meet these people, do we? Do you ever go to the pub on a Saturday and you're like, what do you do for a living? They go, I sell foam rollers on Amazon and I'm a multimillionaire. Nobody ever tells you that. I don't think they want us to know. Oh, you mentioned earlier about it's about somebody having this marketing machinery around yeah. their first business and then almost mimicking that across multiple businesses. Can you describe what this marketing piece of machinery sounds yeah. like? Because that's what I think a lot of women lack. It's very different and it is definitely uh, for each business, but it's very much where everybody lacks. Because everyone's got amazing business ideas. I mean, I have heard some insanely amazing, valuable, incredible business ideas. I've met some of the best. Uh, there's a friend of mine. She is the most incredible coach. Um, she is amazing. But yet, because she hasn't got the marketing machine in place with her business, she enjoys this. You know, she enjoys the speaking to people. She enjoys the helping people but she doesn't have the marketing and the strategy behind it. If she did, and the machine was in place and it was just plugging people into her, Jesus, you know what she would do. So I see this in, honestly, most people's businesses. The marketing machine will differ depending on what type of business model that you have. Um, do you want me to talk about this? I don't know what your audience mainly yeah, specifically. Yeah, they all love what they, kind of stuff. What are your audience specifically? Like, is there a specific kind of like niche or type of business? Like, is it coaching? Is it e-commerce? Is it anything? Uh, across anything? Across okay. anything. And they're all looking at how can they make money when they sleep? How can they have multiple sources of income? And yeah. also recognizing they just don't even know what to ask the website um, the woman for. I know. Do you know, I find that the most frustrating thing. It's been like that in my business. It's how I learned over the 10 years. I've done so many things terribly bloody wrong. Like I haven't just been like, oh, I just touched that and it turned to gold. And then I just, I mean, there have been times when it felt like that, but it was because of the work and the failures that had happened before it. I'm like, nah, I know what I did there. I'm not doing that again. So a marketing machine like is dependent on different businesses. So, um, for example, I've, I've got a one-to-one -one client. I only have three. I don't want any more. But I have a one-to-one -one client who's an accountant. And that's a really different business and industry than I've ever been a part of. So honestly, when I spoke to her, I was like, I don't think I can help you. But if I can direct her to somebody or connect her with someone, my job is done. I feel good about myself. 
So we chatted and she had like over 500 clients already. She's got an insane turnover in her business, but she doesn't know how to grow and scale it. She doesn't have a Facebook, she doesn't have LinkedIn, she doesn't use any social media whatsoever. So to get to the crux of her business and how to set up a marketing machine behind that, I was just like, well, where do you get your leads from right now? You've got a lot of clients. They must have grown over the years. Where are they coming from? She said, just referrals from other clients. And I'm like, okay. So do you have a referral program? No. I'm like, well, the obvious thing there to put in the marketing machine is you put in a referral program, you offer them like, it's a it's a, a low ticket spend for, for them to get their self-assessments done. It's like 300 and quid. You offer them £40, £50 per client they refer that successfully becomes a client of yours um, because you haven't done it already and you're getting eight referrals a week that actually convert into paying clients. So to double it, all you need to do, and she already had this, um, all her clients on like these systems that we could easily reach out to. So I'm like, okay, well, this is the simplest answer to double your business easily. Already had a team member in place. So I was like, okay, she needs an incentive so that she can sell, so she can earn more money. So we just simply just put put a referral program in place, like an affiliate program, put a, um, some communications that we did together and sent those out. And then, um, what else did we do? Uh, and then put in the uh, incentive program for the member of staff. That will get her from point A to point B. She will double her business easily that way. The second example I'll give you is a personal trainer, which could be the same as a coaching business um, or someone who's selling courses, for example. Um, I I speak to a lot of people who have like their system wrong in doing that. And so it's not automated and it's very difficult. And every time they're launching, they're trying to do something different to change it up. And that in itself can be, I mean, it's exhausting to keep trying to think of new things. So I very much just put in what I call an Ascension model, which is like a lower ticket offer, a program, and then it's either a higher ticket program or one-to-one. My launch system, I call it rinse and repeat, which I know is not fancy and it's not like making me out to be a genius because I'm not. But when you have, when you don't know what to ask for or you don't know what you're missing, you need something simple to implement that will guarantee results. And I know that if you follow that launch process, it's what I use, so it works. And so um, that's just like a simple launch process that um, I've taught Cindy to put in. And I think Cindy's done about 15 grand in the last like six weeks, just from implementing a structure. The best thing is she's got that structure now, that's the marketing machine. And she simply puts in that model. So as part of that machine, just to be totally transparent, there are, um, and that was profit that she made, not ad spend. So I, most people make the mistake of never doing any audience building activities. Facebook ads for me are incredibly lucrative and very like low spend. Most people think like, oh, I could lose so much money. Like, how can you? You start at five pounds a day. If that ad doesn't work, you adapt it, you tweak it, you twist it, and you try and find an ad that works. And you'll find some that it's almost like tapping in, you know, and getting that spring of gold. And you're like, oh my God, this is it. I did one recently, I don't mind sharing with you. Um, my target audience is people who want to build side businesses or they want to start a business. So I did the top 10 businesses for mums in 2023. Just like a free download video of me talking through 10 different streams of income that you can build. Um, I think I get the leads through from that at like 70, 80 pence a lead, which is like 2008 kind of prices. But that just shows right thing, right audience. And so I've always, always got several audience building things on at the same time. And they're very low spend. They way more than pay for themselves. So I think every business needs to have, even if it's not advertised, paid advertising, they need to have that stream of how they go, that strategy on just audience building. Most people miss out that step and go straight into like, I'm going to try and sell what it is that I'm doing. And you've you've missed out that step or they miss out the next step, which is nurturing the leads afterwards. Just a simple email nurture sequence like works really, really well. And then some consistent advertising, low spend. Um, But yeah, ads will never will never cost you. They will always make you money if you're doing them right. Mm. So this is quite exciting for you. So (laughs) I I thought you were just specializing in developing Amazon shops. 
and side oh, hustle. I am not the expert on that, Cheryl, but I can hook you up with Anna, who is. She can definitely talk more about it. But I, I almost think of myself as like, I know I have the expertise in like strategy and building like a brand and, and building the marketing machines behind them. But um, I'm, I feel like I'm more of like a facilitator. So I find the very best people in different areas. And then I put them in front of my audience that trusts me because they know I'm very like no BS. I don't like fluff. I'm like, tell me as it is. Don't try and dupe me. I can see if you're not the real deal. And so I think that's why then for my audience over the years, they trust if I say only use this person from Facebook ads because I have been swindled over the years and this person is the person that I know and that I trust and you should use. Or if someone's like, oh, I got quoted like five grand to set up a sales fund. I'm like, what? Okay, I've got a team that can do it for a few hundred quid. Do not spend that money. You do not need to spend it. Because I feel like there's so much, you know, back when I was starting my business, you probably feel the same. You couldn't find the information. Even though we had the internet, you know, but you couldn't find the information. Now it's the bloody opposite. Now we're inundated with someone can turn your business into a multiple seven figure business overnight. If, you know, you don't have to pay them anything unless they get results. And it's just confusing all of the time. So you end up, one step forward, two steps back, one step forward, two steps back. And I think um, clarity is really like undervalued in the entrepreneurial space. You've got to have the clarity and you've got to have the, the focus to see through a project before you then start to build the next stream. So what, what would you say your core business is now and where do you want to be taking that business? Because I'm aware that you have an amazing lifestyle because you, you jump between Lanzarote and lots of other... No, people. I'm not in Lanzarote anymore. You're not in Lanzarote anymore. <laughs> we should have had a glass of wine and a really good We episode. should have. <laughs> no, uh, I lived in Lanzarote just before my sister was diagnosed. And as, she, as, of course, as soon as I got the phone call, I just got on a plane and went home. We have a house in, in Wales and so uh, we moved back there and then um, we actually came out to Spain and we go between Spain and Portugal um, and then we're just actually leaving here we're going traveling for six weeks in a motorhome with the two kids pray for me um, I've got this illusion that it's going to be this amazing adventure it's probably going to be really shit <laughs> You know, when you're like, oh, I'm like Mary Poppins, it's probably gonna be like, get in here, get up. <laughs> and they don't sleep or something, but hopefully it'll be good. And then I come back, yeah, we're coming back to Spain for a little bit then. And yeah, so it's nice. Yeah, yeah. so you really are living the global online business dream, really. And, <laughs> you know, becoming mobile and loving where you live and having a bit of variety, mixing it up. So, what was the big decision to do that? Uh, it's probably ADHD. <laughs> I don't know. Do you know, I hate the feeling. I don't know whether it's from, I'm going to turn this on, do not disturb, sorry. Um, I, I hate the feeling of feeling trapped. And um, after my sister died, my mum and dad um, moved into, like, they've got a lodge in my garden. And um, I thought, I, I suddenly started, probably, I mean, I had a baby, my second child, 60 days after Nick died. And I, would, I don't know, well, I mean, hormones, emotions, grief, uh, everything. I don't even know what I was thinking. But I was just like, I don't want to I don't want to be trapped. Like, I don't want to be stuck here. And I just I just think like life is life is so short. You have to do what makes you feel good at that time. And look, I understand that I've built an online business that allows me to do it. I'm really grateful for that. But on the other hand, like anyone can do that. You've just got to find your thing. And if you just go on to, I always go on to um, the ad library, like Facebook ads library. I don't know if you know that you can do that. I go to the ad library and I type in just random stuff, like random stuff. You wouldn't believe what people make money doing. Like it's, it's wild. And then somewhere like where I live now, it's full of entrepreneurs. I mean, literally. Every beauty treatment I go and have, they ask me questions constantly about business and they've got fingers in this pies and this pies and this pies. And it's inspiring, you know? And it does matter like who you surround yourself with and who um, 
who you're amongst. And I felt like if I had stayed where I was, I probably would have just settled. And don't get me wrong, you know, settled on a really successful business that gave us an amazing life. But I don't know, I just wanted more of, you know, like adventure. Yeah. Enjoy the adventure, I think. So we have an event coming up this Friday. And it's more about creating big online sales and have some great women who are part of it. So we have Rachel Bedgood. She's holding, she's hosting the event in her offices and uh, she took CRB checking online. So she turns over about 8 million on less than 20 staff. And yes. then our chair of Iron Woman, Kate was an Iron Woman member some eight years ago, Sarah Boltman and uh, was a, a a data scientist and again had set up an employee-owned company uh, employing 30 people and they turn over a few million and we have Nikki Bright who Nikki Bright Holidays who went from 99p in her purse to just under 2 million in two years using some really innovative marketing techniques uh -huh. um, so I think it's really good to surround ourselves with amazing women who not only are talented, but usually there's been an important driver to be, you know, to make that happen for this, you know, for your heart to sing as part of the process. Mm -hmm. And also to be around women who are willing to share, you know, the advice or the tips, yes. the tricks, the whatevers. So what advice would you give women if they were thinking of, you know, getting more active online or starting up online or just scaling up online? I think really the, um, I mean, the point even you just made for those wonderful women is look how different, like the different things that they do like, are. Not all of us grow up around people who are entrepreneurial. So for so many people, it's so alien. And I think the hardest thing, like we were saying, Sharon, is like, who do you trust? And what do you need to know? Because sometimes you don't know what you need to know. I would be careful, always be careful of going down rabbit holes online of, you know, kind of the promises of like, we'll give you this secret or we'll give you that secret. I don't think there are secrets, but there are definitely shortcuts and fast tracks. One of those is obviously being a member of a community like yours, where people are genuinely willing to share. Because people who have in, I mean, I believe success is by your own definition, but people who have in, in what we would call blanket kind of like created success in their lives, they understand that there is no such thing as competition. Like, you are your only competition because there is enough space for everybody in an online world. My one tip would to be really like be yourself. And I know this is like a cheesy thing to say, but I don't think people understand like to the depths of what I mean it because I have had so many people over the years tell me you should be a bit more professional. Like don't swear, don't uh, hang out with your sales team at a bar or have like drink with them or have a party I didn't listen to a single <laughs> a single thing I did everything that I was told not to do in leadership I made friends with people which I was told you should never make friends because it's business and there's this line and boundaries and I'm like oh, it's just not me so if I've got to do it that way I don't want to do it I believe that everybody's way works um the business is always going to be you. You're always going to be the driving force behind it. So if you've got to pretend or try and be something that you're not, it's going to be really bloody difficult and probably not very enjoyable. So showing up online, um, if you follow me on social media, like it's real. You know, I might live in a beautiful looking place and stuff, but my kids sometimes are still full of snot and they're running around in nappies or they're screaming or they're giving me shit or speaking to me badly or doing the normal stuff. And when I see other people's lives, I'm like, well, I don't know what they're doing in their house, but that is not my life. <laughs> I like this bloody heart. So I'm talking about grief. I was advised, like a couple of business coaches were like, don't, don't, don't do that. I lost thousands and thousands of followers as my sister was ill. She was dying and after she died. And I just felt like, they're just not my people. And it's cool. And I get why a lot of people wouldn't want to watch too, because it can be triggering. I know that now as well after losing Nick. But 
I was always, I can honestly say, like, I'm always completely and utterly myself. And I do believe it's every woman's secret weapon. You start speaking more honestly about the things like whatever your business is and the pains that have surrounded that for you in order to get that business out there. If you talk about those boldly and honestly, um, I think very sometimes powerful. very, powerful. very powerful. It's been interesting to watch Karen Hutchins of Goose Island because she had uh, a few shops and then during COVID, you know, nobody, obviously the shops are closed. Yeah. So she went in with a mobile phone and started you know, doing some Facebook lives and showing everyone what she was wearing. And also yeah. during that period, you know, she'd not long lost her husband. So was sharing her stories. But during that period, you know, she you know her income shot to three million and people did want to know how she was dealing with her grief they wanted to see the dog they wanted to know what she was doing on the weekends and people sit down when she does her lives you know with a glass of wine because they're there and they're yeah. part of her life and by the you know oh, by right. a, a weekly uh, you know live she will have you know about 50 or 60,000 people will have watched her, her Facebook lives. You know, these are massive numbers. It's crazy. And I think, I mean, it's inspiring, right? I mean, we see that it's inspiring. But, you know, on the other side of that, if you're at the beginning of your journey, you're like, well, I've only got 30, 100 friends and where am I going to do? I know people who earn, I mean, I sold... I don't even know how much it was, if I'm honest. It's over 100 million. Over 100 million of another company's product. And I had 380 friends on Facebook. And I did not do Facebook Lives. And I did not do social media well. I was shit. And I did not, <laughs> I did not do all of the things that if I had known that there were people out there who taught you how to market correctly at that time, I, I, I did the opposite to what they probably would have said. But guess what? It still worked. Yeah, people so, want ordinary, don't they? They want the real. They want, you know, the genuine person in front of them. I think so. So to just to to be you and to just have the balls to keep showing up, it doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't. But you will be surprised how many people are out there just waiting for you to tell the story, to inspire them, to make them feel normal, to be relatable. Um, and then to understand that you know, I literally had no experience I never sold even in our beauty salon I was so crap at selling like my sister would go nuts she's like Emma that was an express facial which was 15 pounds like 20 years ago it was 15 pounds why did you say just call it 12 like she booked the appointment knowing I was like oh I know I just feel awkward she's like Emma we're making money you've never even sold a nail varnish I was like I know I just feel like I don't want to pester them so from if honestly going from that to be, I would genuinely call myself a sales queen now. I like, I love sales. I love sales. Um, then you know anyone can do it. You've just got to be willing to start before you're ready. So how could we help you in your journey going wherever you're going? Because it sounds pretty exciting. Oh. I just like I just like gathering friends to be honest I think at some point when you I mean I would love to know what the, the women in this group do I'm always looking for experts I'm always looking for people to even put in front see I'm always looking to help other people I'm terrible but I'm I'm always looking to um expand we're we're launching something in October which I can't say about yet but there's inside of entrepreneurs too and yeah, there might be a call that there is some kind of like uh, link and I don't know what everyone does. So if you want to comment in the comments and just tell me what you do, what services you offer, what your expertise are in, or if you want to, you can say like where you're stuck and I can just give you some, you know, while I'm sat in my motorhome traveling, it'll give me something to do rather than watching box sets. Um, then I'll reply to everybody, you know, and if I can help you or put you in the direction of somebody or just give you a next step, I would be more than happy to do that. That'd be cool. And where are you taking your business to in the next, say, two, three, four, five years? Well, <laughs> I've been having a lot of um, meetings at the moment. Uh, do you know, I've been really working on kind of, you know, I've been really heavily in grief for two and a half years and managed to build the business to the level it's at. Uh, with that and I feel like now 
of maybe moving here. I feel like my life is a little bit light. It feels lighter. So I feel like I'm like oh, way more kind of, and I've had some, you know, really big people kind of reach out of wanting to do some things together, which is cool. So I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't know where it's going. I want to help as many people as possible um, access and be able to build multiple streams of income. And I, and for me, that's just limitless because I just feel like everybody will have something and everybody needs like a business ally. I mean, I've never been more frustrated than getting to where I've got to in business and there's nobody, nobody that you can speak to. And I have a couple of friends now, but that genuinely has your best interests at heart, that wants to see you win. And that can honestly take you from A to B without the promises and the, you know, the six figure spend on a mastermind where you have no one to want access to anybody. The person running it might not even have achieved what you've achieved. And you're like, where is it, you know? So I had that at the, even at the beginning of my journey. And so I wanted to provide that space for other people. That there's always someone to go to that isn't like looking to sell you something all of the time or looking to direct you to an offer like that just really wants to see people win. So it's providing that space and, and just helping more people on a bigger level. I think that's definitely where we're going. Fantastic. And are you ever back in Cardiff these days on Newport? Well, I'm going tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going tomorrow because we bought a motorhome, a new motorhome. So we pick that up the day after. I get one night with my husband on our own. Um, we don't get any. Uh, we haven't for six months. We've lived here, so um, I'm looking forward to that one night of freedom. And then we go visiting family, and then we go off to France. Then wonderful. And we'll see how long that lasts. Uh, well, <laughs> we we'll certainly have to get a date in your diary when you're coming back to Cardiff okay. and. Uh... Well, I'm back in November, on the 18th of November, I'm actually, I haven't launched it yet, but I have an event that I'm running in Cardiff, um, in the Exchange Hotel, uh, on the 18th of November, so I will definitely be back in and around that day, so I would blooming love to meet up. Oh, fantastic, well, have a great day ahead, and happy travelling, stay safe, <laughs> thank you for your time. Really You're cool. more than welcome, anytime Cheryl, thank you for having me. Pleasure, bye darling, bye bye. <laughs>